Welcome back to another math video with Mrs. Hill. Today I'm going to show you how to convert fractions and decimals. Make sure you write down all the notes and examples I give you and bring those notes to class tomorrow. Let's start with 7 eighths. You may remember some of this from the past. So let's review how to write 7 eighths as a decimal. Method number one, you would simply divide. 7 divided by 8. So numerator divided by denominator. Add a decimal point and a zero to begin with because eight doesn't go into seven. Eight goes into 70 eight times because eight times eight is 64. Remainder six. And we're gonna keep dropping zeros until we figure out if it is a terminating or repeating decimal. Sometimes it goes on forever. Let's take a look at this one. So now I'm gonna divide eight into 60. And that is 7 times, because 7 times 8 is 56, remainder 4. And when I bring down one more zero, I see that 8 goes into 40 exactly 5 times, because 5 times 8 is 40. So, once I have a remainder of a zero, I am finished. My decimal is a terminating decimal. That means it ends, it terminates 0 0.875, or 875,000. That is 7 eighths as a decimal. Method number two, use a calculator. Obviously, I don't want you to use a calculator to figure out the work because I want to practice division, but you may check your work with a calculator and that would simply be, don't forget to punch in the numerator first, seven divided by denominator equals 0.875. If you have one of those fancy calculators or uh, scientific or graphing, you can actually punch in the fraction, 7 eighths, and it'll convert it for you. So I'd like you to try some. These are pretty simple uh, terminating decimals. Why don't you try these two, pause the video, unpause when you're finished, 4 fifths and 3 sixteenths, and then we'll go over them. All right, let's go over how to change 4 fifths to a decimal. I hope that you may have um, remembered an easier method, which I'm gonna go over in a few minutes, but let's go ahead and divide, because that's what I just showed you. Four fifths is four divided by five. Five doesn't go into four. Five goes into 40 exactly eight times. So four fifths is 0 0.8 or eight tenths. All right, this one's a little bit different, a little bit harder. So three divided by 16. One of the most common mistakes when turning a fraction to a decimal is kids divide the wrong numbers. So they end up putting the denominator on the inside. So remember the numerator becomes your dividend, the denominator becomes your divisor. All right, so 16 goes into 30 just one time. Add the zero there. When I subtract, I get 14. I bring down a zero. Let's see, 16 into 140. Hmm. And let's take a guess here. Um, let's try eight times. Six times eight is 48. One times eight is eight and four is 12. And looks like that was close enough. Eight times 16 is 128. And my remainder is going to be 12. You need to be grouping. Hopefully you're just checking your work at this point. And it's still going. So now I'm going to divide 16 into 120. Well, I know it goes into 120 um, eight, eight times. That must be seven. Let's check what 16 times Bill seven is. Please dismiss the players for their last 112. 112. Please report to the gymnasium. Subtract and I get eight. And this one's going on for a little while, but I'm going to persevere with it. Now divide 16 into 80, and when you check 16 times 5, 6 times 5 is 30, 5 times 1 is 5, and 3 is exactly 80. So this one took a few minutes, but I was able to figure out that it is 0 0.1875. Hope you saw my method for dividing. You don't have to guess and check because I had a two-digit divisor. I don't know my 16 times table, so I had to do a little guessing and checking on the division. All right, let's look at some more 
example of writing fractions as a decimal. Sometimes the fractions do not, the, the decimals do not terminate. Sometimes they repeat. That means the numbers keep on going and going. Let's look at some examples. Make sure you're writing these down. 5 12. So 5 divided by 12. Add my decimal and my zero. 12 doesn't go into 5. It goes into 54 times because 4 times 12 is 48. Remainder 2. Write down the zero. 12 goes into 20 just one time. 1 times 12 is 12. Remainder 8. Bring down another zero. Uh, 12 goes into 86 times. 6 times 12 is 72. And aha, uh -huh. here I'm noticing a remainder of 8 again. If I bring down another zero, 12 is going to go into 86 times again. And I'm going to have the same remainder over and over. So the 6 repeats. So 5 12 is actually 0.416. And I'm going to put a bar over the 6 to show that it repeats. Make sure you use bar notation if a number repeats. Okay, here we have an example of a negative fraction, 211. So I know my answer is going to be negative 0 point something. So I'm just going to divide as usual. 2 divided by 11. I'm going to divide 11 into 2. 11 goes into 20 one time. Remainder 9, bring down a 0. 11 goes into 98 times because 8 times 11 is 88. Remainder 2. And oh, look at this. I'm back to where I started. 11 goes into 20 one time. And I'm going to keep on getting the same thing 20, 11, 90, 88. So it's going to be 0 0.181818. So in this situation, I'm going to put the bar over the 1 and the 8 because both of those digits repeat. Notice this one, I only put the bar over the 6 because my 4 and my 1 didn't repeat, only the 6. So only put the bar over the numbers that repeat. Okay, I want to show you, um, before I have you practice some, again, go back, rewind the video if I talked too quickly or went too quickly, and you can um, look back over those examples if you need to uh, see that more slowly. I want to show you that it is very helpful for you to memorize some what I call easy fraction decimal equivalents. Hopefully you already know that one half is 0 0.5. If there's any of these that you don't already know and have memorized, I would strongly encourage you to write them down, maybe even on flashcards with a decimal on one side, fraction on the other, so that you can practice and memorize them as soon as you can. If you already know them, you don't need to write them down. One half is 0.5. I think most of us know that by now. Uh, one quarter, one fourth, that, I don't think of money. That's like 25 cents, 0 0.25. Three quarters is 0 0.75, like 75 cents. One quarter, one fourth, three quarters, three fourths. All right, a few other easy ones. The thirds. The third, one third is 0 0.33333. Check it out if you want to uh, see. One divided by three. When you do one divided by three to find the decimal equivalent for one third, you'll see you're going to get 0 0.3 repetitive. So two thirds is 0 0.6 repetitive. So these are some easy, easy fraction decimal equivalents that you might want to commit to memory if you haven't already. Uh, a few minutes ago, we saw a fifth. I think we saw, was it two fifths or three fifths? It was one of the fifths. And fifths are pretty easy to memorize as well. One fifth is the same as two tenths, isn't it? If we multiply by two, which as a decimal is 0 0.2. So if one fifth is 0 0.2, two fifths is 0 0.4. Three fifths is 0 0.6. 4 fifths is 0 0.8. Look, 2 fifths is equal to 4 tenths. See, 5 times 2 is 10, 2 times 2 is 4. So these are pretty easy. 1 fifth, 2 fifths, 3 fifths, 4 fifths. I do not expect you, uh, nor would I want you to divide every single fraction to convert it to a decimal. There are definitely some shortcuts 
we're going to be talking about over the next few days. Um, memorize these ones. If you get something you haven't memorized, certainly you can divide it. We're going to talk about other strategies. And then, obviously, if it's 10 on the bottom, then all you have to do is write the numerator in the tenths place. If 100 is on the bottom, write the numerator in the hundredths place. Okay? So, let's say you have something like 4 tenths. What would that look like as a decimal? 0 0.4. Well, what if you had 4 hundredths? How would you write that as a decimal? 0 0.04. Okay, um, one more. What if I had 24 hundredths? How would I write this as a decimal? The last digit goes in that hundredths place, which is right here. So 0 0.24. Right, there's one we didn't talk about. The 5 6. I don't think this is necessarily an easy fraction. But certainly memorize it if you can. 5, 6 is 0 0.83333. I wouldn't have added that to an easy list of uh, fractions to memorize. But it's there, so you can memorize it if you want to. I want to finish with two real-life examples for you and um, of when you would, might want to convert fractions to decimals. Um, let's take a look. Look at this first food example here. According to the USDA, U.S. Department of Agriculture, teenage boys should consume an average of 2,700 calories a day. That's a lot of calories for you. About 360 calories should come from milk. I think that's actually changed in recent years. It, it, it should come from protein sources. Milk is a good protein source. To the nearest hundred, what part of a teenage boy's total calories should come from milk? Okay, so we've got 360 should come from milk and they're supposed to consume 2,700 calories per day. So 360 from milk, 2,700 for the whole day. If we want to figure out what part this is, uh, we could write it as a fraction in simplest form or we could write it as a decimal. One strategy I can use here is I could, instead of having to divide 360 by 2,700, I can simplify this fraction. Simplifying a fraction definitely makes the problem simpler because then we'll have smaller numbers to work with. Let's see, first thing I can do is I can divide by 100, cross off those zeros. Um, then I would have 36 over 270. Do you see a common factor for both of these? Yes. Nine. We can divide by nine. So 36 divided by nine would give me four, and 270 divided by nine would give me 30. Okay, I just made the problem a little easier for myself. Now I only have to divide four by 30 instead of 360 uh, by 2,700. Okay, so now I can convert this fraction to a decimal. So, so 30 doesn't go into four. 30 goes into 41 times, the remainder is 10, bring down the zero. 30 goes into 100 three times, three times 30 is 90, the remainder is 10, and ah, look what's happening here. I'm gonna get a repeating decimal. 30 is gonna go into 100 three times again for the remainder of 10. So. It looks like it's 0 0.13 repetitive. So if I were to write this as a fraction, a teenage boy's total calories should come from milk is about 0.13 or 4 thirtieths of their total calories. All right, I would like you to try this one problem on your own and bring this problem to class tomorrow. We'll go over it then. Let me read it to you. In a recent Masters tournament, Zach Johnson's first shot landed on the fairway 45 out of 56 times. To the nearest thousand, what part of the time did his shot land on the fairway? All right, go ahead and use whatever strategies you can to come up with that fraction as a decimal. All right, great listening. Bring all those notes and this example to class tomorrow. I'll see you then.